Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for September 23rd, 2015. I'm your host, Bo Willock, and we are going to discuss several stories regarding mobile device security today, um, as well as some vulnerabilities that were found in one of the major antivirus companies. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. If you're in the need of a penetration test, vulnerability assessment, or any other type of security assessment for that matter, contact Black Hills Infosec by sending an email over to consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. And by Cybery.it, get the latest hacking and security training for free from www.cybery.it. And you can visit the special referral link below at hacknaked.tv forward slash cybrary. All right, Android lock screen bypass. First of uh, a few stories on mobile device security here. Um, so a new, a new vulnerability was discovered by some researchers from the University of Texas that would allow an attacker to bypass a password protected Android device, uh, specifically the lock screen on a, an Android device. Uh, this would mean that an, an attacker could actually gain access to the operating system itself without putting a valid password in. Um, essentially what they found was that when the camera app is, is on, uh, basically, which, which is which is easily accessible on every Android device by default now, um, that an attacker can then try to access settings through the camera, and then whenever that that comes up, it prompts you for your password um, because you can't alter any settings without entering a password, a valid password. So whenever you whenever you get to that password screen, uh, as an attacker, if you entered a really long password. Um, you could essentially destabilize and crash the lock screen itself, which would allow you full access to the Android operating system. Um, so, so who's at risk exactly? Well, and pretty much any Android 5 device with the exception of 5.1.1 where it has been patched. So if you have not upgraded 5.1.1 yet or do not have an upgrade available, um, then you are potentially vulnerable right now. So uh, look to see if you got an update uh, and make sure that you are uh, up to date at 5.1.1. Oh, and one other thing to note here is that th this particular vulnerability is not, um, it, it's only its only found in, in devices that actually require a password to access the device, not a passcode or PIN um, or the actual pattern swipe to unlock it, just a password. iOS malware. So Apple devices don't get viruses, right? Well, uh, that's not entirely true, apparently, because uh, a new uh, piece of malware was found in the Apple Store itself um, called Xcode Ghost. A number of malicious apps that made iPhones and iPads part of a botnet that stole sensitive data from users was found in about 476 apps in the Apple Store. And that's just so far. They haven't actually came out with like a full, like, that's it that's, that we found. But so far, they've found 476 apps. Uh, that are infected by uh, this Xcode Ghost. So how, how is it that all these apps got infected by this particular piece of malware? Well, uh, developers or Apple, Apple app developers typically use an, an app called Xcode to develop with. Um, a repackaged version of that uh, included a small script that would, would, uh, would add extra code to those apps. So whenever valid apps were being developed using this malicious repackaged dev tool, uh, they would mis mistakenly or unknowingly uh, add in extra code that would allow attackers access to the device. Well, it, it actually made them part of a botnet, not necessarily it gave them remote access, but made them part of a botnet that would send data. Um, so if you, if you want to learn more about um, what, what particular apps were vulnerable, or if you want to learn more about how to go about detecting if any of your apps are infected currently, um, or just, just more techniques to, uh, or more, more, uh, more tips at uh, securing your, your Apple device, check out this uh, blog post below from the Sands Institute. It's, uh, it's really good and uh, will give you a lot of valuable information. Um, a $1 million bug bounty. So if you're not familiar with bug bounties, typically organizations will offer uh, various rewards for certain researchers to find vulnerabilities in their software. Um, they'll usually tip, like put it out in the open and say, hey, you know, if you find a vulnerability in our particular piece of software, we'll give you something in return. It's, it's a nice way to get, uh, get nice vulnerabilities found in your, or get decent vulnerabilities found in your software uh, for a relatively cheap price. Um, but in this particular case, uh, this company, Zerodium, is hosting a $1 million bug bounty. That's that's a hefty amount, focused specifically on iOS 9. Uh, what they're looking for exactly is a browser-based 
and untethered jailbreak for the latest Apple iOS 9 operating system. Um, it must allow remote, privileged, and persistent installation of an app. So essentially what they want here is they want uh, a user of an iPhone or iPad to be able to visit a malicious site with, say, Safari, um, and have their device completely compromised. Um, if, if you're a, an, an Apple exploit developer or if you uh, uh, like to just do bug bounties, you might want to check this one out because uh, it's, it's a pretty hefty price tag. Kaspersky Vuln. So let's talk about vulnerabilities in antivirus softwares. Um, a Google researcher found a number of vulnerabilities in the Kaspersky antivirus. So he, he basically found that these particular vulnerabilities could be triggered by simply visiting a website or receiving an email. So it's, it's trivial to trigger these vulnerabilities in the actual AV engine. And the reason that is is because most AV engines will typically parse through and analyze files as they're coming across the wire. Um, you know, so your, your, your actual browser as it downloads new files um, or an email that has an attachment, you don't even have to open the email. That attachment's already being analyzed by AV typically uh, before you even open it. So um, he found that the vulnerabilities in Kaspersky specifically uh, would grant an attacker system level access, which uh, is, is pretty ridiculous. I mean, I, I, assumingly most antivirus softwares use or run as system anyway, but um, we need to start making sure that these types of engines shy away from uh, utilizing system level access if possible. Um, due to these specific vulnerabilities. Um, actually, in, in 2007, Sands Institute came out and said that antivirus is one of the top 20 threats to organizations because of this reason. Um, as, as attackers start targeting antivirus companies specifically or just security vendors in general, um, I mean, things like um, FireEye, where they're, they're parsing multiple files that come across a wire, can be just as targeted as, as this. Um, and, you know, we're going to start to see more and more vulnerabilities pop up um, they actually came out and said that there's very strong evidence that in the black market right now, there's there's a lot of trade going on of specifically AV exploits. So uh, expect to see some more of that in the near future. That's it for this edition of Hack Naked TV. Um, if you want to check out more Hack Naked TV, check out hacknaked.tv. Check out the always hilarious, always informative Security Weekly at wiki.securityweekly.com. Um, you can email us at the show at hacknaked.tv. I'm on Twitter at DaftHack, and I will see you all this week at DerbyCon. Um, come say hi. We'll be hanging out. Um, and uh, if you're not there, well, hope to see you somewhere else in the future. Have a great weekend. Bye.